it's now being recorded. No name tags will be visible on the recording. Um, if you agree to this being recorded, please could you all now type yes in the text chat. Um, otherwise, um, well, the alternative would be for you to make yourself invisible or go somewhere else. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I shall do that. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to thank, first of all, the film crew for their work. Um, as you've heard, this is being recorded. It means that you will be able to watch it in the future or indeed give the link to other people to, to watch. So thank you very much to Hiker and other people who've been doing this during, during the conference. Um, if you want to pass on the um, slow for this, the, um, the slow, the link for this one, it's the um, HTTP colon two forward slash slashes lancelot.adobeconnect.com forward slash sl. Now, something which is just so important to us in this conference is the opportunity to network. And we really hope that all of the sessions prove to be a major work networking opportunity for educators. So I'm going to ask you all to do something now. You've, if you've been to other sessions, you will have already done this. But please, could you do it again now? Because we tend to have a different group of people each time. First of all, could you all type in a, just a one-liner in the text chat what sort of professional background you come from, um, what, or perhaps what sort of area of research you're into? So as much detail as you want to give us, but perhaps just a line would be enough of your name, what sort of sector you work in, and what sort of research you're into. Could you do that now, please? Another thing which we'd like people to, to write is that um, if you are into Twitter, if you have a Twitter tag, could you write that in as well, please? I'm not seeing anything at the moment, so I don't know whether it's any, what people just don't want to or whether I'm not being heard. <laughs> oh, yes, it's working now. OK. Um, We'd encourage you also to add each other as friends. Obviously, you don't have to accept friendship as it's offered, and we're not going to be offended if you don't accept our friendship. But this is a really good opportunity to do so. And I personally am very happy to be befriended, and I know that Hiker is as well. So in order to make friends with us, if you right click on us, um, and then you can um, in add friend. and. Uh, do that with other people around the place as well. So don't feel shy about just adding people as friends. Uh, the conference tag, if you are tweeting about this, is hashtag and then S-L-A-N-G-12. So if you are going to Twitter this, and I'm just typing it in at the moment, this would be the hashtag to use. There we go. OK. Right. Um, and another thing which sometimes we're a bit embarrassed to talk about, but over here, I'm just going to show you where it is. There is a tip jar here. I'll just jump around a little bit here so you could see it. <laughs> um, a group of people join together on this and do contribute money so that we can afford to have this extra bit of land, which means that we don't suffer so much from lag or problems. So if you do feel that you can spare some lindens just to be able to contribute towards that. That's the place where you can tip the venue. OK. Um, what I'm going to do now is to introduce our speakers. Um, obviously, speakers give freely of their time, and we're really, really grateful for them coming along. Um, and I'm just going to read out the biographies. This is obviously particularly also for the sake of the recording to do this. You can all read this on the um, website, but I'd like to read them aloud. So the people we have with us are, first of all, Adriana Sanchez, or Adrienne Lexico. And she holds a certificate in virtual worlds from the University of Washington. She's been an EduNation resident since 2010. And she works at the Digital Trainer. She has over 20 years experience teaching English and Spanish for specific purposes to adults in multinational companies. And then we have Liz Dorland. Um, or Shimura Cosmos, and she's an educational innovator and early adopter of new technologies for education. Um, she's been teaching college chemistry for 35 years in colleges in the USA. You'd never believe that from looking at you. And she's provided an understanding of how students learn and the effect 
effective use of visualizations and animations. Uh, National Science Foundation activities include serving on the NSF review panels since, the, since 1992, and there's an NSF DUE chemistry program director in 2003 to 4. And then finally, we have Nancy McDonald Miller, or and I don't know how you would pronounce this, Nanny or Nanny Kale, and she's the Nanny executive director. Uh -huh. All oh, right, thank you. <laughs> she's the executive director of Virtual Native Lands. She promotes the use of virtual world technologies to strengthen and sustain real world Native American communities. And she's currently developing 3D immersive educational video games for teaching and preserving endangered Native American languages and cultures and a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. So um, I welcome you again to the conference and invite you now to take the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, we are uh, delighted to be here today. We are very pleased to present the Museum of Virtual Media at this conference. This um, museum as was inspired by the book Infinite Reality, which is a book on virtual worlds, technology and education, written by Jim Blaskovich and Jeremy Bailenson. And it was a collaborative final project of uh, class 2012 of the University of Washington Certificate in Virtual Worlds, um, developed by Randy Hendricks, instructor of um, the program. Let me move on to our next slide. The um, museum was also inspired in um, the movie Avatar, since it is an island surrounded by water, and it has uh, sky platforms, which are floating islands, similar to the movie Avatar. This was also this uh, project was also accompanied by mentors Cecily Zapatero, Stiliano Sling, and Beck Streeter, with whom we worked throughout three modules, selecting and using virtual worlds, designing and programming. The result was this uh, Museum of Virtual Media, which contains 12 exhibits. They all have 3D instructional design methodologies, which include storytelling, gaming, and learning archetypes. We have been a team of uh, people from uh, different professional backgrounds, architecture, graphic designers. Some of us were teachers, curriculum designers, people from marketing, publishing, information technology, and business management, and also participants from different countries, Argentina, Finland, Greece, and the United States. As I said before, the museum has 12 exhibits. The first exhibit is the landing point which has a circular shape. This was developed by Lila Thoreau and Soro Labisco. And here we have four main activities which we can do while in the museum. We can tour, teleport, quest, and explore at our own pace the different exhibits. Storytelling, developed by Zorro Labisco, goes from oral traditions to digital media. The exhibit is still under construction, 
but you can visit it. It's a sky platform which uh, can be reached through teleporting device that is on ground. If you want to visit the caves from Lascaux, you can visit the graphics exhibit developed by Magnus Anderson and Bruce Swizzle. Another exhibit was a sculpture developed by Leela and Rylan Bledsoe. The theater where we in the future plan to hold events like lectures, discussion groups. Don't miss photography, another exhibit developed by Rylan Bledsoe. Electricity developed by Rylan and Tapio Soriano from Finland. This exhibit is right above the sky, it's a sky platform. You won't believe your eyes when you get there. If you want to know what happens, what <laughs> If you want to know what happens uh, inside a radio station, okay, the broadcast media exhibit developed by Secession Lewis is the place you should go. There um, you can uh, also uh, role play one of the archetypes we explored. Or if you want to see what's inside a TV channel, well, second part to this exhibit is um, this area. Merlin Moonshadow prepared a skybox uh, where he um, developed what's going on inside a computer and its circuits through an exhibit called Computer and the Internet. And myself, an exhibit about what I consider could be the digital media of the future. Okay, that's something that it was a bit thought-provoking and um, well once you visit it I'd like to have your thoughts uh, so feel free to contact me anytime or leave your comments um, through the uh, different mechanisms I left uh, inside the exhibit. I would like now to leave you with Chimera. She will tell you about our first stop in our tour towards uh, the uh, Museum of Virtual Media. Chimera. Okay. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, the, uh, you saw the overhead shot before of the uh, sky view from the sim. There are four exhibits that occupy the corners on the ground, and mine is one of them, cinematography. The radio station is in another, the theater another in the caves and another. So if you go to the central landing point, you'll find these sky bridges. You can see this gray walkway. So when we go over to tour, the first place we'll land is in the, the center. And then we'll walk through an arch and we'll go over to the theater. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my thinking on the theater and what we're going to see while we're over there. And then once we're finished the theater, we're going to teleport up to Nanny's exhibit and she'll in a few minutes tell you about hers uh, also. So cinematography in the Valensen, uh in uh, Blaskovich's book is in a, a kind of a timeline that they set up starting back with uh, cave paintings and they make the argument that all of these things are immersive in one way or another, writing. So when you get up to photography and then into cinematography, the history begins in the 1800s. So the different sections of the exhibit here include um, 
pre-film, the uh, beginnings of animation in one section. You can see just a little bit of it in the lower left corner down there. And then uh, the turn of the century development of film itself. And that's where the, the uh, exhibits mostly concentrate. When you're there, you can also climb this uh, Jack and the Beanstalk, very tall beanstalk. And this is a part of the quest. You can go on uh, a quest in all around the sim areas. And this is one place that you'll find to go up. We're not going to go up the beanstalk. It's rather tall. But what we are going to do is focus on the things happening in the theater. So I have another slide that kind of zooms in on the upper theater, which you see, and then the lower screens below that, the film annex. When I was building this, I used uh, things from other builders in Second Life. Go ahead and go to the second, next slide. So up in the theater area, you saw the outside of the theater, and this was, it was built by, it's freebie that I got and modified from one of the early builders in Second Life. Inside the, of the theater, there's a lobby, that's in the upper right corner, and there's some artifacts of early animation that are in there. And once you go inside, I picked a film that Blaskovich and Balenson in particular mentioned as being an early immersive experience. You can see the train coming out of the screen there. The, it turns out that the Lumiere brothers had one of the very first films ever exhibited. And one of them was this, that's a very simple film. It's a train coming into a station, but the train comes out at you very fast. And the story goes that the people were not used to seeing films at all, and so they were rather frightened by this giant locomotive coming out of them, and some even screamed and ran from the theater. That is definitely an immersive experience, and I wanted to translate that somehow into Second Life. So the engine that you see coming out of our screen is actually a freebie. I think you could probably take a copy when you're there and ride the Second Life railroads. So the feeling is that the engine is coming out of the screen at you. One of the things I want to do in the future is to script this so that it actually does move in and out of the screen. That hasn't happened yet. So going with the idea of the immersiveness of the film environment, this film was first uh, displayed in the 1890s. And if you look in the middle of the screen, in the smaller picture, there was a famous train accident that happened in France. A locomotive uh, went uh, rogue <laughs> and ran out the front of the station and fell down. The real picture of this is on the left of that small inset. And then I have a mock-up of this outside the theater. It happened in the same year that this other film was produced. And, I, and it happened before. So I wonder, I haven't found any evidence of this yet, but I wonder if there were some uh, feelings that people had left over from this horrible train accident that maybe carried over when they saw this film where the train was coming at them. But leaving the lobby, you can go outside and you can see the train wreck coming out of the side of the theater. We're going to look around a little bit on this level. We won't have time to go down to the lower left level. Here, this is the zoopraxiscope. This is animation uh, that was, uh, it's a, this is another thing I find really interesting about Second Life, is that if there are artifacts that you want to explore, I learned about the zoopraxiscope and I went to uh, the marketplace and I went zoopraxiscope and search and sure enough, someone had made one. So this is a, a model of what uh, Muybridge used to uh, take frames of uh, a horse galloping and then animated them and proved that horses actually do have all four hooves leaving the ground. So he's a, a very important pioneer in uh, pre-cinema days. I want to make that more interactive too. And so I'll welcome comments from you guys when you get over there to figure out how to get people to understand what the horses are doing galloping up the hill here, having their picture taken. And then in the lower right, the uh, the Lumiere Brothers films and also the George Melius films at the turn of the century were very influential in later filmmakers. Uh, Melius invented stop motion. The Lumiere Brothers were the first to exhibit and develop some of the early projectors. Uh, Melius in particular was interesting because he came from a magic background. And I think Second Life is a rather magical place too with our particles and things. And so if you watch some of the Melius films, you can definitely see the influence of magic in the cinema. So there are a variety of experiences you can have. You can watch the uh, first in the air film. You can watch a variety of turn of the century films, find the beanstalk, look at the artifacts in the lobby, or sit and enjoy uh, some champagne, which you can grab down at the lower theater. So we'll spend just a little time there, but of course it would take a lot longer to go through the rest of the exhibits. So now, from here, we'll teleport up to Nanny's exhibit. So she's going to tell you more about hers.
Shall I introduce myself? Hi, everyone. I'm Nancy McDonald Miller. I'm a citizen of the Cherokee Nation, uh, which is located in Oklahoma, and I'm director of the uh, Virtual Native Lands, which is an educational services organization. I mentioned earlier that is promoting the use of uh, virtual worlds to benefit Native Americans. I think we've got a lot that we can gain from, from virtual worlds, so I'm trying to help out with that. My portion of the book maze of the uh, museum uh, is the amazing book maze, which uh, incorporates, combines the concepts of manuscripts and movable type under the heading of writing in general. And uh, I guess we can look at the next slide, uh, Adrian, if you've got that ready. And I'll explain what I, I did with this, um, this maze. The game, uh, the maze is a game based on um, game design principles that we studied in the UW uh, Virtual Worlds program last year. And four key principles of a well-designed 3D learning game as described in the book uh, that we used in the second quarter, Learning in 3D by, uh, let's see, it's by uh, Carl M. Kapp and Tony O'Driscoll, which is an outstanding book that uh, uh, goes into a lot of detail in how to create a good game. And four of the principles that they talk about are agency, which is the ability to take action, exploration, which is the ability to navigate and explore, experience being the ability to engage in activities and see the consequences, and connectedness, the ability to interact with other people. And uh, this maze actually employs all of those principles. The book maze is a prototype that was built uh, really quickly in the last two weeks after uh, a design decision was made that required all of the sections of the virtual media museum that were in the sky to be placed on floating rock platforms. But uh, my original game that I've been working on since January wouldn't fit on a floating rock platform, so ack, I was just scrambling like crazy to come up with something in the last two weeks before the final class presentation so I could pass the class. And as often happens under pressure, I, I just woke up one morning and this bright idea popped into my mind, why not make a maze? Why not make a book maze? But actually the book maze turned out to be an even better idea than my first one was. It uh, turns out that a maze is an outstanding uh, type of uh, um, uh, learning environment for um, virtual worlds. This maze uh, that I used here is actually a modification of one I found on a British website that has a lot of free maze pa uh, patterns. And it's uh, actually made for a, a five-year-old. But you discover that it's a lot more difficult to navigate through a maze uh, with your avatar than it is to just look at one on paper and, and complete it. So it's, it's really an interesting uh, uh, arrangement. And I chose this particular one because it had an entrance on one side and an exit on the back so that you could make a path through it. And it also was divided up into three um, kind of segments that, that are enclosed within themselves so I could uh, divide the, the content of writing, which is an enormous topic, up into three different areas there where I've got uh, early writing in manuscripts, printing in movable type, and then electronic writing media up in the other area. Uh, the game is set up with a HUD that allows um, players to collect six game tokens. Those are uh, located where the stars are there, and then uh, you win a prize at the end of it. And um, I envision kind of a narrative theme going along the main uh, route of the, um, of the maze that sort of explains the, the development in history and the impact that writing has had on us uh, personally and culturally. And, uh, it, it turned out pretty well. I, uh, mazes are really easy to build, and they can contain just an enormous amount of inf information and activities on a, a wide range of different formats in an environment like uh, Second Life. And they can be combined with other mazes of uh, increasing complexity to create a game that has achievement levels. And uh, it, it turned out to be uh, pretty good. I left the top of this one open so that people could uh, look down into it uh, or fly out if they get frustrated, but um, it could be made in a lot of different ways. So there, it's turned out to be a really interesting tool uh, that I would encourage other people to take a look at because it, it turns out to be a pretty engaging game and you can uh, modify it in different ways to cover a lot of different subject matters. The amount of uh, content under the topic of writing is just really astonishing, I discovered. It's very deep and complex and very interesting. But I've only touched on a few topics in uh, my maze exhibit here, just kind of put up a few things to show what could be done as an example.
Uh, next slide, um, Adrian, uh, shows the uh, the uh, connectedness component of the game. <clears throat> I made a little joke about a bookworm that wanted to get his wings and used a, a quote that I found um, as uh, with six words in it uh, from Aristophanes as the tokens for my prize. And uh, uh, the players collect each one of these tokens as they navigate the, the maze. And when they get to the end, if they've completed the um, the uh, the quest and gotten all the tokens, then they're supposed to be able to click uh, a sign and receive a pair of wearable wings, like the little bookworm did, and then fly out of the maze if they want to. Uh, I'm still working on the script, so basically everybody who clicks the the uh, uh, prize giver will get a prize, whether they've completed the, the quest or not at this point. But um, it's uh, that that component uh, of having a visible um, token or a uh, what is described as a, a badge of achievement is a part of what's connectedness about the, um, the game. You, you can play the game with other people as well, but having a, a visible um, token of your achievement is one of the ways that you connect with other people. And one of the reward systems that they use in, in well-designed games is that people can tell that you've achieved it. And, and that is real motivating to uh, players. So I hope you'll have a look at it and give me some feedback on what you think. And I hope over time that I'll be able to add some more content because I did find some really wonderful things under the topic of writing that are, that are amazing and, and really worth uh, learning about. So thank you very much. Thank you, Nanny. They will love your maze. But we won't tell them what the price is. So our um, last stop in the tour, last but not least, will be about fair use in education. And um, well, this is not in the book, but um, it, um, let's say, uh, was a topic that uh, was brought about because um, we, we were talking about the use of uh, copyrighted materials and uh, during the second um, Quarter, I was working with um, with a movie, uh, with an exhibit, which was um, based on the movie The Matrix. So then um, there were some doubts about my using the movie or the um, or pictures uh, taken from the movie. So I was wondering if I was able to, you know, use them in virtual worlds, so I said, okay, why not prepare an exhibit about the fair use in education in virtual worlds? So that's what I prepared in this last exhibit. So I uh, based my exhibit on the Matrix movie, and I created a box with four different scenes from the movie. The first scene is uh, a scene I called the uh, comfort zone. And the idea of this comfort zone is um, in a way to ask ourselves about how familiar we are with um, the use of Web 2.0 and fair use and um, this comfort zone we are in. Sometimes we are afraid of using certain things because we are not sure of whether we can use them or not and well we don't use them or we use certain things without knowing. So comfort zone. Why would we recommend other language instructors to leave the comfort zone? If the comfort zone would make us better instructors, better educators. The second scene is also based on the movie The Matrix and it's the scene where Neo, the main character, has to decide whether he should take one pill, the blue pill, or the red pill. And by doing that he makes a choice. Okay, in real life as instructors, as educators, how do we choose what's best for our classes? 
how do we choose what is the best media to use? Because by choosing the best media, by making that choice, we are also ensuring a certain result to our classes. The third scene I called the unknown has to do with working in this virtual world and this uncertainty we feel of working in a world, in an environment which is completely new to us and to our, I mean, our students, to our participants. And it's a world in which we have to use things which are completely new. And little by little we have to unravel all this uh, mystery. And the last scene, which I call the new paradigm, is also based on the movie The Matrix, and it has to do with Neo, the character, living this uh, new reality once he goes through this unknown world, this uncertainty, and he enters this new virtual reality. He starts to experience that he could live by different principles, that he could live using a different paradigm. So in this last scene, the idea was to present and also ask ourselves, okay, what does the law say in our countries about fair use? What does the law say about the use of copyrighted materials? Unfortunately, not in all, not only not, not in all countries, uh, teachers, educators are aware of what can be done and what can't be done. So, this is a 3D model of our museum. Are you ready for a tour? Yes? Slap me why in chat or we are going to start. Pins to show you the three places we're going. Okay. So, we are going to start with um, Chimera's uh, tour. Okay, we will uh, take you to uh, the landing point and start with Chimera's and her exhibit, her cinematography exhibit. Then we are going to move to manuscripts and finally to the future. All right? Feel you free to you have the poster send to that, us. Adrian? Yeah, sure. Feel free to send us your questions in case you want to organize a tour to the museum or you have further questions about the exhibits. These are our email addresses. If you click on the posters. I think Karelia is also preparing a, a note card. If it doesn't work for you to All right, the great. poster. Either way, you'll land in the center of the circle and we need to... You will land. The archway mm. that if you click on the posters, you will land. Okay, you will land. okay great. Just, okay, Thank great. you, Karelia. I've just done that because I know that sometimes, occasionally, people and myself get lost along the way. And if you've got the, the, post, the um, note card, there is a landmark in there, so you should get close to us there. Thank you ever so much for that introduction. And let's go. I can't wait now. I really am. I'm like a little kid here. Really looking forward to seeing this. <laughs> so, um, so perhaps if I, I'll stay here while you go ahead, and I'll be able to okay. guide people. people. Okay, 
Great. That's right. Okay. Thank you, Carolia. Thank you, Carolia. Okay, All right, great. looking forward to coming. Okay, so if you could uh, stand up then, click on the. I'm standing over by the arch that we're going to go through. Wait just a little bit so that things start to rise. Them. If you have your media turned on, your media checked, then you'll be able to watch the film inside. And the outside part here are some of the artifacts that I was talking about <clears throat> and a place to sit down and chat. But inside the theater is where the film is. The, the train is coming out at you on the left. On the right, that board actually has a movie in it. So if you just see a still image, then it means that you need to get your media turned on and warmed up, and then you can Click on the screen and start playing. Looks like we have a few people still coming over. how to turn media on if you don't have it on to be able to view videos. It should start playing itself as soon as you click it if your media is on. Anyone else left oh, over there? True. Hey, No, it seems like there's nobody else coming. Wow. So, oh. yeah, so uh, a lot of the buildings here came with the theater. Equipment I got from one of the builders in Second Life. Those of you who are new, if you don't know, you can right click on things and look and see who the builder is, and then you can find out where they sell things and go uh, score some nice artifacts for yourself. So feel free to <laughs> click on things to find out what their origin is. So when you have a chance, if you don't have time today, you can come back and have a look at this film and 
it was one of the original set of 10 or 12 that were shown all at once by the Lumiere brothers. So it's a very famous film in the history of cinematography. Now, this engine here, you have to be careful. You might actually sit on it if you touch it. And I'm not sure about the perms, but if you can't take this one here, this is a freebie that you can get from the Second Life Railroad, and then you can go ride your own train on the rails. Does anyone have questions in here? I'll look in chat. Oh, and there's popcorn. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Right outside the door here, if you would like a box of popcorn, go ahead and touch the popcorn dispenser. I want to see if you teleport, because I don't know where you are. Okay, hang on. Find you. I found you. Ray Lecondo. Oh, I can see where you all are now. It's correct. But I said to people I will TP them there. Okay. Any questions, go ahead and type them in chat. This popcorn is a typical chatty object. A lot of objects in Second Life like to uh, comment on it <laughs> when you're eating or drinking. Let everyone else know that you're enjoying the products. <laughs> I guess it's a second life form of advertising. <laughs> I think it's probably good that our food doesn't talk to us normally. <laughs> Sorry, fine thought. <laughs> so the only thing in here that's media is the, the actual film. So if you're seeing a static train, that's just a texture. But once your media is going, then you'd be able to see the, the train come into the station and, and uh, run screaming mm -hmm. out of the theater if you want to add some realism to the scene. <laughs> So I do hope to get that script, the big train scripted so that it'll start out in the wall and then it'll come out and frighten all the customers here. <laughs> so let's uh, walk out the door and go to the right and you can see the train wreck, the Montparnasse famous train wreck that I recreated over here. And then when we come back around the corner, notice this box here. This has got a picture of Gutenberg and that's your clue. As you come out the door, after you've looked around to your satisfaction, this is what's going to teleport you to Nanny's place. So find the picture of Gutenberg and Click that and it'll bring up the map for you to teleport the, the walk back down. <clears throat> so over here on this end, if you walk to the end and turn around, you'll see the, the train wreck coming out of the side of the uh, station here. This is the one that I was mentioning that happened just before that film came out, and so I wonder. And this is another engine that can actually be ridden on the Second Life Railway. I think it cost me a dollar in the marketplace. Down below here is where the Zoopraxiscope exhibit is from the, uh, and there's some galloping horses down there, but we really don't have time or we won't get to everyone's exhibit if we look at everything. So feel free to come back and wander around through here and, and see some more things as it develops. So when you're ready, click on the box over here <clears throat> by the theater door and that will take you up to the beginning of Nanny's Maze and then she'll tell us more about her exhibit. See you all there. One corner of the sim here, so this is also at ground level an area where you can explore around and see several of the other exhibits, plus just some of the scenery. On the landing point there are videos and things too that you can spend some time on if you want to come back to visit. Oh, the beanstalk. Uh, if you want to come back to the beanstalk, it's down this other way. So just so you know, right down here. And if you really look hard, you can find the diving board that you can jump off of and go for a swim. This is delightful. <laughs> I love it. And is this a general area? It is. Yeah. Is it open to people? Uh, can people? Yes, yes, yes. It's open. Oh. Because I'm always like looking for places exploring. which, um, because it's G is 16 and 17 year olds can come here as well, can't they? Well, I'll just wait. Here's come somebody. <laughs> I can wait a little while. There's, mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. This is a, 
a do-it-yourself kind of thing, and I, I'll show you where mm -hmm. it begins, and just uh, see what you can do as much as you want to. What I'm hoping people will do is uh, take a look at, at the way ma uh, the, this maze can be used as a teaching tool, and, and kind of imagine ways that you may uh, be able to employ it in your own um, designs, a, a maze type design, because it is actually pretty captivating. It it um, it has all the elements of a pretty good game, even though it's simple. It has the same motivations and rewards that a, a good uh, 3D immersive game has, and a real right. simple package. And you can put so much information in this thing. I I just barely uh, touched on it, but you can see, you know, you could have um, a media that uh, displays in quite a few different ways. There's some objects in here that are interactive. When a few people show up, or you can start on your own if you'd like, just take a look. Uh, inside the first door here um, is the beginning. This is the quest giver here. This little uh, butterfly wings. Uh, if you click on them, it'll uh, give you a HUD uh, that I think is titled, let me check to make sure. It's called Museum of Virtual Media. Um, Teleport. Yeah. Let me see. Is that Cyber's voice I heard? Oh, those are. Let me check here. I've got the wrong thing open. <laughs> so it's called. You'll get a museum of virtual media book maze HUD, which you can right-click and choose where, and it'll display in the upper left corner of your screen. And as you go around the uh, the maze, there will be these scrolls that have a word on them. You can see the words kind of hidden in, uh, darkened out in your, um, in your head there. By words, the mind is winged. There's a quote from a play by Aristophanes, uh, written in, uh, uh, I think it was 414 or something like that, BC. And um, I thought it was a good, good topic and made a kind of interesting thing to, uh, to use for your um, exploration. And then, uh, you start off with um, um, early writing, and then go to uh, all over the world to different types of writing, and um, to all kinds of uh, print, and then on to uh, electronic media. And it's uh, it's kind of self-explanatory. Uh, there are some books uh, here that you can kind of page through. These are click clickable objects, and uh, there's some uh, media. The website launchers and things of that type. As you go through here, all kinds of examples of different kinds of writing, different ways that people have written, things that they've written about. The role of women in writing is highlighted. It's just a, I discovered so much, so many amazing things putting this together. It was just so much content. There was no way I could get it all in. <clears throat> <laughs> But it, you can kind of see how it would just go on and on. And there's there are several things as you get down into the maze that are, are interactive, objects that you can click on or use or interact with. And, and it's just barely scratching the surface of what can be done. This book, this big um, lion, purple blue, is, uh, is searchable. Please enjoy. Just wander, get lost as much as you or as little as you care to, and uh, see if you can find your way out and see what you think of, of some of these things. I hope to be able to work on it uh, through the future and get get a little bit more out of it. But it's uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. You just wander through it. It's a maze, and uh, and find those scrolls and click on them and see if you can get to the end of it. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Idea. Really? Is. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It's got a lot of fun stuff in it, and it's just you can see by using just simple uh, textures how very much you could add to something like this on many different uh, topics. This this is a good one, but any any uh, place that you've got an encyclopedic amount of information that you want to display interactively, uh, a structure like this would be a good way to do it. I think.
I think it's a real good way because it covers a lot in a very small area. So the teleport box should be right at the entrance and the exit. Oh, there's one at the exit too? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think most of us know how to fly. That's kind of the idea. At least they're supposed to be. It's not rezzed yet for me. Oh, I see one out here. There's one at the back. You see what? Okay. Yeah. I've just got some lag and so on. I'm saying it's like here, there should be a box with a picture of a green sort of matrixy looking thing that takes you up to uh, the Writing on the board. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? I want to go. I want to play at being a teacher. <laughs> Writing on the chalkboard. That's, that's what got me into this. I had a little chalkboard when I, I was given it when I was about, I don't know, six years old. And that was it. That just made me into a teacher. <laughs> that was made you the teacher. Oh, I love it. Uh -huh. So hold still. Don't give up for a minute because I just want to take a picture of the chalk. So, Adrienne, are you still down here or are you up? She won't hear me if she's up above. I think she's out here uh, sitting in the room uh, at the circle. She was. are amazing. Where are you? Hello, Inspira was lost, and I've just <laughs> TP'd Inspira. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to fly okay. up and fly to the green dots and find you guys. Are you out by the exit? Where are we? <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, we're, we're being amazingly dazed here. Are, is it time to go up? Uh -huh. <laughs> is it time to go up now? Okay, I'll... I'll Well, this is a great way of getting to everybody lost, isn't it? <laughs> Otherwise, you might be <laughs> you might be stuck here forever. I'm I'm totally stuck now. <laughs> oh wow! Really lost. Really, yeah, well, really lost. So where are we going to now? Is there a, 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 um, a landmark? Yeah, the landmark should show you the first thing on it. You just <laughs> click that and it should teleport you up. The thief ran into the maze. There it Wonderful. is, finally. Boy, it took forever to res for me. Just, if you touch it, it moved a little bit. Go. Did I just stand on someone? <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome. Oh yeah, there she is. Yes. Welcome to the um, Matrix exhibit. So the idea was to, as I told you during the uh, presentation, 
to um, introduce four scenes from the movie and then um, show you how we could use uh, okay okay great Hodalis uh, and then um, show you um, four scenes from the movie and uh, mm. something about fair use in education and some activities we could um, carry out with um, students in a um, in a in a foreign uh, language class okay so as I said I called this uh, first scene the comfort zone is inspired in the matrix as you can see um, and I wanted to recreate the uh, living room where Neo used to spend most of the time reading watching TV or using the computer while hacking, you know, Mia was a hacker. If you follow yes, me the uh, next um, scene, because we are running, <laughs> we are running out of time. It's probably just about a couple of minutes. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. And sure, I, I can't yeah. offer to go yeah, and deal with stragglers because I don't know where I am. <laughs> oh well, we are in the second scene now. Yeah, the teleports where you back are. are in the first scene and the fourth scene. Just, um, oh. Okay, if you follow me, this is the first, um, first scene. The fourth scene is the uh, new paradigm. First scene, where are you? What do you see around? Karelia, Odalis, and Anna, if you follow me through the door, yeah, we go to yeah, the I'm... second scene. This is the scene where he has to make the choice, okay, of choosing the blue pill or the uh, red pill, and the idea is, okay, about the choices we make when choosing uh, media. Ooh. If you click on um, here, you can watch a part of the movie the scene in which I inspire, got inspired to recreate this uh, scene, this 3D scene. If you click, uh, also, also each scene contains um, an explanatory um, sign and here boxes. If you click on the boxes, the red box has a um, note card on fair use, the yellow on the use of 3D virtual learning environments and the green box about task-based learning activities that you can carry out with your students. All right. <clears throat> if you follow me to the um, next room, this is the one I called the unknown. I'm, and uh, how do we I'm get sorry, through to the room? To re sorry. <laughs> How did we get through the room? Oh, you just walked through the door. You just have Sorry. to walk through the door. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. I was looking for something conventional, like, no, like no, a no, door no. handle. This way, you know, the idea was to reduce the number of scripts that we were using. Okay. Um, as you remember, Neo had to take a pill, and he entered a new reality, okay? And this new reality was unknown to him, okay? So the same thing happens to us when we start using an environment as it is a 3D virtual learning environment which is unknown to us and we have to learn how to manage how to move around that new virtual environment. So in this new virtual environment how do we use the media? Are we familiar on the way we are supposed to use the media? Do we photocopy books and then give away copies to students? Are we familiar with copyright issues? Do we teach students how they are supposed to deal with copyright issues? Okay, once we, Neo, also in the movie, learns about this new 
reality, he enters a new world for us would be a new paradigm. That's why this scene I called a new paradigm. You just have to go through the wall. And in a way, this new paradigm made of technology transforms this experience of being human. And being in a new paradigm doesn't mean that we have to be afraid because we don't know our way, our way around. We just have to learn the principles. As you can see, all the exhibits that you have been through are very interactive. So you just have to click on things. I hope you uh, have time uh, to come over here some other time and visit us. Well, can I say on behalf of everybody, thank you so much for everything you've done. We now have to round up with the recording. There's another session no, which is um, starting, but that has been absolutely fascinating. You. And so if okay. everybody could, uh, yes, please feel free to applause. I always have difficulty finding my applause. I know I've okay. got applause somewhere. Uh, Just, here we are. Let's teleport to the top. Let's teleport to, to, to port the top because there we have the right. teleporting to Edunations, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chimera and Nani also. Thank you let's all. Let's teleport to the top. I think there's a bit of good in both nationalities.